Good morning, church. Psalms 96 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Secure whatever he'll be tied, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know my Jesus is a rock, in we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land. Jesus is a rock, in we're in land. And seize and shelter in a time of storm. A shape on day, defense by night. Can seize and shelter in a time of storm. No fears, alarm, no foes of fright. Can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know my Jesus is a rock and we're in land. Oh, we're in land. We believe Jesus is a rock, and we believe He's a shelter in a time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh refuge dear, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know. My Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land. Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know my Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land. Jesus is a rock. And we're in land, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Oh, rock divine, no refuse here, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know my Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land, Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, can seize and shelter in a time of storm, you know my Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land, Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. You know my Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, oh, we're in land, we're in land. Jesus is a rock, and we're in land, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Oh, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Oh, can seize and shelter in a time of storm. Yes, can seize my shelter in a time of storm. Open the floodgates of heaven, sing, let it rain. Oh, let it rain. of heaven, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain, sing, open the floodgates, floodgates of heaven, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain, sing, open the floodgates, Gates of heaven, 
sing, let it rain, oh let it rain, sing, shower your blessings, shower your blessings upon me, sing, let it rain, sing, let it rain, oh shower your blessings. Blessings upon me, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain. Drip drop your blessings, drip drop your blessings upon me, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain. Sing, drip drop your blessings. Blessings upon me, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain, sing, open the floodgates, floodgates of heaven, sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain, sing, open the floodgates. of heaven sing let it rain oh let it rain oh I feel the rain oh I feel the rain yes I feel the rain oh I feel the rain yes it's raining Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Yes, it's raining. It's raining. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Oh, I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Yes, 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 it's raining. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Yes, it's raining. It's raining. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Open the floodgates. Heaven, sing, let it rain. Sing, let it rain. Oh, open the floodgates. Sing, let it rain, oh, let it rain. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. It's while the blood is running warm. It's in my veins, oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Well, it's in my veins, flows in my veins, yes, in my veins, flows in my veins. Well, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, oh, Lord, it's in my veins. Yes, I'm gonna sing just a little over here. Yes, I'm gonna sing just a little up there. Sing while the blood is running warm. It's in my veins, the oh Lord's in my veins. Yes, in my veins, Lord's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord's in my veins. Well, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins. Yes, I'm gonna praise just a little over here. I'm gonna praise just a little over there. Yes, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, oh Lord. It's in my veins, yes, in my veins, so it's in my veins, yes, it's in my veins, so it's in my veins. Well, while the blood 
is running warm is in my veins no lose in my veins yes in my veins flows in my veins yes in my veins flows in my veins well while the blood is running warm is in my veins no lose in my veins I'm gonna shout just a little over here I'm gonna shout just a little over there Well, while the blood is running warm It's in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins Yes, I'm gonna shout just a little over here Well, I'm gonna shout just a little over there Well, while the blood it's running warm it's in my veins Oh Lord, it's in my veins Well, it's in my veins Lord, it's in my veins Yes, it's in my veins Lord, it's in my veins Yes, while the blood is running warm it's in my veins Oh Lord, it's in my veins Well, it's in my veins Lord, it's in my veins It's in my veins Lord, it's in my veins Well, while the blood is running warm While the blood is running warm While the blood is running warm It's in my veins Oh Lord, is in my veins. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven says, "But thanks to be God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ." Someone has said, "Your attitude determines your altitude." Many times, it is easy to get caught up in the negative things that happens around us, that we forget to thank God for His blessings, for the victory that God has granted us. But God is a good God. He's good to give everything that we need to give, Lord. I really love the Lord. Oh. That's why I love him, I love him, oh, I really love the Lord. Sing, I really love him, sing, I really love the I love him, I love him, oh, I really love the Lord, and I'm gonna praise his name, I'm going to praise his name, and oh, oh, sing I. To praise his name, and you just don't know, you don't know what he's done for me. Oh, he gave me the victory, that's why I love him, I love him. Oh, I'm really in love. The Lord, and I'm gonna praise His name. I'm going to praise His name. 
Oh, I'm going to praise His name, and you just don't know, you don't know what He's done for me. Oh, yes, He gave me the victory. That's why I love Him. I love Him. No, oh, I really love the Lord. And you just don't know, don't know what He's done for me. Yes, Lord, He gave me the big story. That's why I love him. I love him. No, oh, I really love the Lord. Oh, I really love the Lord. Lord, he gave me the victory, that's why I love him, I love him, oh, I really love the Good morning, church, once again. It is truly, truly a blessing to be on this time side of life. And this is now time for our communion service to the Lord. This is a time that we should reflect. Reflect on our spiritual walk with Christ. The only reason we stand here and are breathing today is because of that sacrifice. That sacrifice once and for all. Did we deserve it? That is in question. But God loved us anyway despite our faults, and he sent his only begotten son for the sins of the world. What are we gonna do to respond to such love as that? We just sang a song, I really love the Lord. Do we really love the Lord? Let us reflect on that as we commune together. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. To the most high and most righteous Father, we thank you and we are eternally grateful for the love that you continue to shine upon us every day. We thank you one more day. We thank you for, the, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, as we commune together as your church, help us to reflect on our lives, on our spiritual walk with you. Right now, Lord, we just, we thank you. We thank you for that sacrifice. And as we partake, let us continue to reflect and remember our Lord and Savior who hung, bled, and died just so that we could have a right to the tree of life. We thank you eternally. In Jesus' name we do pray. 
Amen. You may now break the first and second seal. Now, it is time for us to give. We should always get excited about giving. You know, the scripture tells us, I will bless the Lord at all times. It didn't say sometimes, it said at all times, right? And sometimes we try to, you know, exclude that part about giving. <laughs> but it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth and it should always continually be in our pockets as well so let us take this opportunity to give back to God what is already rightfully his so let us take an opportunity of this blessing and as we pray at this time Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we thank you we thank you for this day we thank you for this wonderful opportunity for us to give back to you a portion which you have already blessed us with. We ask that you will bless everyone that has given this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. yourself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Sing a Is the Son of God? Oh, my Jesus is the Son of God, and He died to set us free. And He died to set us free. I was was lost, but now I'm found. Oh, I was was lost, but now I'm found. And I was lost, but now I see. And I was lost, but now I see. yourself in the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. So in the sight of the Lord, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. 
blessing to be alive today, and for those who had a wonderful time yesterday, uh, I'm celebrating the, the 4th of July. Uh, I hope you had a wonderful time. Uh, amen. Had me with a bad attitude yesterday. It was, it was too much. Amen. It was, <laughs> it was like being in Iraq or, <laughs> or Beirut. Amen. I, I <laughs> Amen. I have a friend, um, his name is Stevie, and he, he very seriously said, um, pray for those who have been in, in combat, those who have been in Afghanistan, because uh, many of them may be going through um, um, PTSD right now. So just, just amen. But if you had a wonderful time yesterday, you popped your firecrackers and ate your barbecue and amen and celebrated um, Independence Day. Um, praise God for you, and I hope you had a wonderful time on yesterday. <clears throat> I'm excited today because today is the Lord's Day. And so regardless of what is going on in the world, today is the Lord's Day. And so we rejoice in this day. What a, an amazing, marvelous job uh, Tony Stokes did this morning. Y'all say amen. He, he just did a great job this morning. We're glad to have uh, I'm with him today. Uh, his amazing, beautiful mama, uh, uh, Kim, and, and good old Justin, amen. Glad to have y'all with us too, helping lead our worship. And of course, our deacon, who always does an amazing job on bass or lead or, or doing our children's ministry or whatever he does, he's, he's just always all in and we appreciate him, uh, our deacon, Clint Richardson. Um, so praise the Lord this morning. We are still in a series called Inseparable. Uh, yes, and today, uh, across our brotherhood of Churches of Christ, we are uh, in a unity Sunday, and so everyone is going to have either preach on joy or have joy in their messages today. And so in our inseparable series, there is uh, a series primarily about marriage. Uh, we want to let you know that the only way you can really have joy in your marriage is if you have a whole lot of this C word. If you have the C word in your marriage, amen, you can have a whole lot of joy in your marriage. Ain't God good? Ain't God good? And I'm glad I know him. I, I don't know if you know him or not, but if you don't know the Lord today, in the pardoning of your sins, it's hard to live this life uh, uh, without Jesus at the center of everything we do. Uh, the Lord gave himself so that we might come into a right relationship with God Almighty. And as we serve our great God, we remember the great sacrifice he made on Calvary's cross by giving his son, Jesus Christ, for the remission or forgiveness of our sins. And so that transformative activity helps us be able to live even in this life as if uh, we were citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And so if you are not in the body of Christ, if you have never been baptized in water for the remission or forgiveness of your sins, if you've never turned from the destruction that's in the world uh, to uh, the delight that's in the Lord, you're always invited um, to come to the Lord at any time. You, in any of our feeds, if you just write down that I'd like to know the Lord better, or if you're on our Church of Christ, uh, Metropol our Metropolitan Church of Christ online Facebook page, you can just press that contact us button and we will get with you as soon as we can. Amen. Today's messages are a little different. Usually I preach the same message at our 8 o'clock and at our 11 o'clock services. Well, today uh, it's a little different 
uh, in this inseparable series, the first service, uh, we're going to preach about the C word. Amen. And the, <laughs> yeah. And in the second service, we're going to preach about the F word. Get your names out. Get just get your minds out the gutter. Just yeah, because I know how y'all just just stop being worldly for a minute. Amen. This is a Christian church. Amen. <laughs> but this C word, the C word that we're going to talk about this morning, if you're going to have joy in your relationships, the C word is communication. <laughs> going to read a passage to you from Ephesians 4, verse 29. The Bible says, let no corrupting communication come out of or proceed forth from your mouths. But the Bible says only, every word in the Bible is important, but only that which is good for uh, the King James Version says, the edification, or as our version we're reading today says, the building up uh, as fits the occasion that it may render or minister grace to those who are hearing. Now, the book of Ephesians, um, if I can just very quickly give you an overview, the book of Ephesians was written by a gentleman named Paul. He, his name wasn't Paul at first. His, his name was at first Saul of Tarsus, and he met the Lord one day. It's funny how that works. When you meet the Lord, he can change, and glory to God, uh, how you interface with life. And so now Saul, who was a killer and a persecutor of the church, now becomes a chief writer and a preacher in the body of Christ. God takes you from the negative to the positive. And so he writes this book. This Ephesians letter, most of us believe it was written to the Ephesians. Uh, some believe it was a, what's called a circular letter and was written to the Laodiceans and meant to be passed around. Regardless of where you believe the destination of, this book is about uh, being in Christ. It's about being powerful in Christ. It's separated into two parts. Uh, verses chapters 1 through 3 tells us about our behavior in Jesus Christ. The position of the Christian, it tells us believers and our blessings in Christ, the privilege of the Christian. And the Bible says because of that in verse in chapters 4 through 6, it tells us the practices of the Christian or the behaviors and battles of the Christian, the responsibilities of the Christian. Our text is found in the place where it talks about the behaviors of the Christians. In other words, uh, once you understand who you are, where you are, and what you have, you know how to act and how to win your fights. I think the problem in marriages many times is we go into marriage not knowing who we are, where we are located in God, and what we need, and the blessings, resources we have. And so we start to fight from a diminished position instead of the powerful position of a person who is in Jesus Christ. Therefore, it affects our behavior. We go in it, into the relationship depending on ourselves, depending on our own ability, coming from a place of fear, a place of hurt, and a place of frustration, which develops in us a, a anger. And so we deal with ourselves and our spouses from an angry place. Here's the bad news. A man went in for his annual checkup, received a phone call from his physician a couple of days later. The doctor said, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. What's the news, the man said. He says, well, you have 48 hours to live. He says, that is bad news. The doctor said, I'm afraid I have even worse news. He said, what is that? I meant to call you two days ago. <laughs> See, com communication and when you communicate and how you communicate is very important. A man named George Bernard Shaw said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. 
I don't know how many times a person will say to me, well, I told them. I said it a many times. But speaking is not communicating if there is no understanding. The C word is a euphemism for several things. It's, it's a euphemism for some street language. It's a euphemism for cancer. But here we want to use it in the way Ephesians 4 uses it about communication. At the core of every healthy relationship, whether it's a marriage or anything else, is the ability of people, especially couples, to successfully communicate with one another. Now, communication is difficult because many of us were raised believing uh, that communication was primarily vocal, whereas only about 30% of communication is vocal. The rest has to do with attitude, intent, body language, um, how people pick up on your vibe. So communication is not as simple and as easy as many think. And when you get married, it becomes even harder because marriage uh, for some reason, carries this idea of what people are supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to understand me. You should have known. But well, people don't know. People can't read your mind. But in marriage, for some strange reason, there's this fantasy that all of a sudden we understand each other when people barely understand each other when they're single. Marriage counselors agree. Most if not all marriage problems are rooted in poor communication. In marriage, communication is the single greatest factor in working through your problems. Many times, if we communicated earlier, a lot of times our problems wouldn't be so huge. But when we, by the time we start communicating, we're already mad. And we're already just running our mouths. When you're caught up in the excitement of your wedding day, <laughs> it's hard to imagine that you and the spouse might not live happily ever after. When you're all pretty, the gentleman's standing there in his tux looking better than he, he has a right to look. And the bride comes walking down there, boy, she's, oh my goodness. And the music is playing. Butterflies are fluttering. Doves are flying. And the whole room is moving in slow motion. Who would have thought that just a week later we'd be talking really fast and not in slow motion and that folk would be cussing one another out? At the core of every healthy relationship and marriage is the ability for people to successfully communicate with one another. Learning to communicate with your spouse is like learning a foreign language. Most of us were never taught proper communication skills. Don't you know when you're married, if you're a man and you marry a woman, and you're a woman, you marry a man that you guys often do not speak the same language even though the same words are coming out of your mouths? That there's a woman speak and a man speak. And that we need to learn, if you're a woman, instead of, oh God, going to get in trouble at the beginning. Instead of trying to diss your husband by telling him, don't man explain things to me. Instead, start to understand what man speak is. And if you're a man, instead of telling your woman she's just too emotional, learn how to speak woman speak. Because that is the only way you can communicate. Ephesians 4.29 again. Let no corrupting communication Come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace or minister grace to those who hear. Three easy points. The first point is about prohibited communication. Hear the Bible in the what they, we call the A portion of this passage. He says, let no corrupting communication proceed forth from your mouth. Therefore, all hurtful, demeaning, or destructive communication is prohibited. Ah, yeah, you're saying, Brother Hager, this ain't on marriage passage. Let me tell you something about uh, uh, the setup uh, of how Paul teaches. Paul, the apostle, often goes from big to little. He goes from the big principles 
to the smaller ideas. He goes from principles to particulars. So now in this section of chapter 4, he's giving us the big principles. When he gets to chapter 5 that we love to talk about in marriage, he's talking about how in relationship to live out these big principles. So when he says husbands love your wives and wives be in submission to your husbands, the expectation is that you've already been in chapter 4. We want to jump to chapter 5 and live out marriage in chapter 5 and never study chapter 4. But no wonder your marriage jacked. Wait a minute. Oh. No wonder you're having difficulties in communication. Because if you don't understand chapter 4, where he's giving us these principles of how to behave, period. When you get into your particular situation, he talks about marriage, he talks about kids, he talks about workplaces. When you get in your particular situation, of course you don't know how to behave because you have not done the first part. And so here's the first part. If I want to communicate in marriage, I don't go to chapter 5, I go to chapter 4. And in chapter 4, he says, when you are communicating with your spouse or with your, with, with your significant other, with your husband, with your wife, he says, let no corrupting communication proceed out of your mouths. This word, let no, let no, he uses comprehensive, none, not at all. He uses a, a general statement, a broad statement to encompass all corrupting communication. Corrupting, this word corrupting, sapras. Sapras means that which decays. That which takes something healthy and breaks it down. So anytime you are using corrupting, rottening kind of talk, stuff which in itself is rotten, and when it is given out, it rottens what it gives, Anything that injures others and spark dissension, when we are using that type of language, we are in viol. Do we like? We don't like to say a violation anymore. Well, well, you're in violation of this passage, of this principle, of this principle. And so, if you go into marriage and you you primarily speak from such a way that demeans, or or or, or disrespects, or tears down your partner then, of course, you do not have uh, this type of good communication. So he says, let no corrupting communication come out of your mouth. Corrupting logos, meaning how you express yourself, not just verbally. So remember, Jesus is called the logos in John 1, meaning he is the word. He's not just the word, the spoken word. Jesus is the manifestation of the character and thoughts of God. And so when he says, let no corrupting communication, he's not only talking about the words coming out of your mouth. He's talking about the intention of what you say, of what we say. He's talking about the body language we use. He's talking about the attitude you put on stuff. Let no, let none of it fix whatever's bad. Get rid of that uh, bad uh, co communication, that which would tear someone down. He says, don't let it proceed out. I love that construction. Don't let it proceed out. That means there's something in there. Oh, God. There's something in there. He's saying, I, I can't stop it from being in there. But what you can stop is from it coming out. Jesus. But focus. say, I just want to keep it real. I just keep it real. So whatever's on my mind, I just says it. Well, you're in violation. Not only that, you're a child. Just FYI. That means you're a child. That don't make you keep it real. That means you can't self-police. That means you have problems with, with, having, with setting up personal boundaries of what comes out of your mouth. There's a whole lot of stuff we think that we don't say. Oh, can I say it? Can I say it? Well, I'm a man. And every time I see a beautiful woman, sometimes things jump in my mind. Oh, is that all right for the preacher to say that? Is that too real for y'all? Something's come in my mind when I see a beautiful woman. So should I just walk up to her and say, hey, girl, let me tell you about yourself. No, and neither do you. But I thought you keep it real. No, you don't keep it real. You just say hurtful things because we become so immature because we have not spent enough time in chapter 1, 2, and 3 to know who we are, whose we are, and the resources we have. So since we don't really know who we are, we've never grown up in Jesus Christ. 
Matter of fact, that's what Ephesians 4 says before, that we may grow up in him who is the head. We've never grown up. We're still children, and so we still communicate like children. We still, like back in my high school days, we bagging on one another. We're trying to, we trying to, trying to talk about people so bad so we can see if they cry. Bible says don't let it come out your mouth. Don't let it proceed forth out of your mouth. That's what the Bible says. Don't let it come up out of your mouth. Let no corrupting communication proceed out of your mouth. No matter what's in there, we need to learn how to squash it and say it in such a way that it will build up. So that's prohibited communication. Prohibited communication is any words that will be hurtful, demeaning, or destructive to any words. It doesn't have to be curse words. It doesn't have to be words calling people out of their name. It could be using the truth in such a way that it is harmful as opposed to lifting up. Oh, God, I wish I had a church, and I like to see people's faces when I say stuff like that. Amen. So anyway, second, point number two, we go from prohibited communication to what's permitted. What's the permitted communication? 29B. He says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. He said, only that which is good for edification. You hear that? He says, only that he used the word Allah. But he says, in, in opposition to that, instead of saying things that are hurtful, say things that build up. But only that, only that, only good stuff, agatha stuff, which is good by nature. You might not be good, he says, but we need to find ways to speak good. Speaking good to others, but only that which is good to the edification of others. So when I speak good stuff, I'm not speaking good stuff to build myself up. He ain't talking about bragging. He's speaking of saying things that will build up another person in their inner person. He says you speak it for the purpose of building up somebody else. You say good things. Things are good which are good by nature. You see how this stuff, you got to learn how to do this stuff? Because the first thing we want to do is pop off. I do. And I know you do also. I know I'm not some strange person, who, the only person I like to tell folks off. But the Bible says when we're in Christ, if we're going to have good marital communication, he says what we have to do is speak things which are good things, good things which oikodomo, which build up. That's permitted. Anything you want to say that's good, that's permitted. Good stuff is permitted. <laughs> All the good stuff is permitted. Everything good you can do. It's all right if it's good stuff. Everything good, you can do. Sweet talking, that's good stuff. Compliments, that's good stuff. Telling people hard truths that they may not want to hear in a way that's loving, that's good stuff. All that's good stuff. He says, you can say all of that. Matter of fact, the Bible, you, <laughs> the apostles, he, woo, he, he's really strong here. He says, but only that. He says, let no corrupting, let no demeaning, destructive communication come out. He says, but only that. Oh, God. I just every time I read these passages, I know I need to change my heart. I know I need to change my mind. I need to repent. I need to apologize to my wife. I, I need to apologize to my, my fellow laborers here at the church. I need to apologize to, to, to the members of the body. I need to apologize to my family because I've been violating the scripture. Maybe the reason they can't be all they need to be is because I just won't let them be great. Perhaps they, they're not great I just, because instead of me building them up, I'm tearing folks down. Maybe the reason my wife can't be everything she needs to be is because of the way I speak to her. And I know what's going through your mind right now. You know, sometimes folks just need to get hurt. Get, you know, they just need to get told. They need to get told. Well, the problem is this. Folks need to, to get told is far outweighed by their need to be built up. See, that's permitted. Building up. Building up. And the final point, verse number, point number three. In the C part of the passage, he says, What's the purpose of communication? The purpose of communication is to fulfill the ministry of the mouth. Your mouth has a ministry. The Bible says that it may minister grace to the hearers. 
I want you to notice that it may, purpose statement. Why do I not speak bad? Why do I speak good for a purpose? Because everything in God is purposeful. God gave us our mouths for a purpose. Not to pop off, but to build up. He says that it may minister grace. That it may minister grace. So my mouth has a ministry. And it is the ministry of what he calls here, caris, beauty, favor that's unmerited. My mouth ought to be giving people beauty. It ought to be giving them favor that they don't deserve. That's grace. You know, we, we understand grace when we talk about salvation, and all of us want it. Oh, yes, I'm saved by grace. <laughs> I'm saved by grace. It's God's unmerited favor. Not a works. Lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God. And we want that. I know I do. I don't want to get to heaven one day. And God says, you know, let me check your works. No, Lord, no. No checking works. We just want grace. Well, the Bible says our mouths are ministers of grace. The reason our mouths are ministers of grace is because chapter 2 of Ephesians, the Bible says, for we are created in Christ Jesus Unto good works. Chapter 2 is a chapter about grace. Grace creates us to be in the image of God to put forth what God wants. So we are literally grace engines, grace motors, grace is arbiters. And therefore, what we do with our mouths are to be about grace. Our mouths minister grace. So everything I say should be giving someone else unmerited favor. Oh God, can I open that up a little bit? Unmerited means without merit, meaning something they can't and won't deserve. I'm going to tell folk good stuff they don't deserve to hear. Undeserved grace, undeserved good things. Favor, beauty, I'm going to give them that they don't deserve. You know, it's very interesting. Have you ever been around people and you give somebody a compliment and they get mad that you gave somebody a compliment? They're like, they didn't deserve that. Why are you telling them good things? They ain't all that. Well, the next time someone does you that way, just tell them I'm walking in my ministry. <laughs> I'm walking in my ministry because my ministry is to minister grace to the hearers. When was the last time you spoke to your spouse just to minister grace? When was the last time that the purpose of your speaking was to fulfill the ministry God put on your mouth? To minister grace to your spouse. How was the last time you just woke up and said, girl, you sure look good today? And you said, well, she don't look that good. She, she looked tore up on the floor. Her hair's not done. She ain't got on no makeup. Her mouth smells like donkey's own. <laughs> Woo! I keep it real. <laughs> but God don't want you to keep it real. God wants you to minister grace. Minister grace. Notice the object to the hearers. So, so, so I'm ministering grace, not for my own purposes, but to build up those who are hearing me. And that's communication in Scripture. That's Ephesians, Ephesians 4.29. First, what's prohibited? Prohibited is anything that tests somebody down. What's permitted? Permitted is those things that build up others. What's the purpose? To minister grace to the hearers. Now, what I want to do now, if you don't mind, I want to, to illustrate this. I'm going to give you a few scriptures first about the tongue. Proverbs 11 and 9, the Bible says, With his mouth the godless destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous escape. James 1, 19, Knowing this, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Colossians 4, 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you might know how you ought to answer every person. Matthew 12, 34 through, 4, through, 4, through 37. You snakes, you evil people. So how can you say anything good? The mouth speaks the things that are in the heart. Good people have good things in their hearts. And so they say good things. But evil people have evil in their hearts. And so they say evil things. I tell you, on the judgment day, people will be responsible. Hear this. For every careless thing they have said. 
How many times? I didn't really mean to say that. I, it just slipped out. No, 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 it didn't slip. It didn't slip. The problem is we don't take enough time dealing with our own heart. Dealing with our own evil. And so what comes popping off is not what a person deserves. It's what's set evilly in our hearts. But the Bible says we're going to answer for those words. The words you have said to you, you, that you have used will judge you, Matthew says. Some of your words will prove you right. But some of your words will prove you guilty. Communication is necessary. I want to illustrate to you communication. I don't know if you can see here. I have some games set up. Many of us know this game. It's called Jenga. Many of you played Jenga. Well, we have three Jenga set up here. Now, first Jenga is a full Jenga. It's nice and whole. And many of us, this is who we want to marry. Somebody with no holes. This last Jenga over here, uh, yeah, this last Jenga full of holes, it's, it's got all kind of stuff on it. Now, this middle Jenga, if you're looking at this middle Jenga, it, it looks good on the outside. But if I turn it on the side, if you looked around the back, if you looked on the side, you'd see there's some missing pieces in this middle Jenga. Now, what about this one? Well, here's communication. When you say something that's bad, something that's negative, what happens is you, you move one. Now, if a person is whole, they can deal with that. It's inconvenient, but in order to fix it, all you got to do is say enough to put that one back. And everything is copacetic. The problem is this. We spend so much time doing this that we have married a whole person, but by the time we finish with them, oh boy, oh boy. And we just keep pulling, and we just keep pulling, and we just keep pulling, and next thing you know, they're acting crazy as we are because our communication has been tearing them down. When we married them, they were great, but now look at them. Now, the fact is, most of us don't come to marriage like this right here. Most of us are not whole. Most of us are more like this. Now, with this one here, it depends on which one you pull. What bad thing you say? If you say this bad thing, it ain't going to bother nobody. Everything is cool. It's easy to put it back. But when you say that one wrong thing, that one wrong thing, you, 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 you didn't say but one wrong thing. But we just, problem was the one wrong thing you said was the wrong one thing. And let me tell you what we do. Now we're sitting up here with a spouse that look like this right here. And you know what we do? We judge them for looking like this. And then we'll say, well, I said I'm sorry. We put this one back. Well, I'm sad I'm sorry. I'm sad I'm sorry. The problem is, in order for you to fix this, you got to pick up all of these and put these back. Well, the problem is some of us don't even marry this person. We married this person right here. They didn't fool us at all. We knew they were jacked up from the jump. We knew that they had baggage. We knew that they had holes in their spirit. Matter of fact, some of us picked them because they were easy pickings. And then when we marry them, we think of some fantasy that, voila, hocus pocus, now they are fixed. Because I have married them. And the preacher said, for better, for worse. And we said up there what I said. We said with our mouths, for better or for worse. And we knew they looked like this, and it was for better or for worse. The problem is, this one's worse is way different than this one's worse. And so then we look at our friend who married this one, who said the same exact thing that we said to this one. And this one was able to deal with it, but this one was already whole. 
And so it took a whole lot less to fix it. One dinner put it back. One dinner, that was all. Bam, I'm feeling good again. Problem is, the one you got here, first of all, she ain't been with your homeboy. Mm -hmm. And your homeboy that messed over so much that this one is gone. But she was also raised in a situation of an alcoholic father and a drug abusing mama. So part of her foundation is gone. And you, and you know what? He grew up in such a way that his daddy never showed him how to be a man. And so part of his middle is gone. And you marry this person. And you say that one ugly thing. That one thing. Problem is, it was this one. I'm going to tell you what happened. You pulling on it. And it was all right because it wasn't gone. You just, you said it one time, it was, it was kind of leaning out. You kept on pulling on it. It wasn't gone yet, but you just, and you kept on pulling on it. And you didn't really know, the only thing you was on is this one. You, you know what? You can't even cook. What's wrong with you? You ain't even a woman. You don't understand her. She, the mom was a drug addict. Of course she don't know how to be a woman. She, you keep on pulling on it, pulling on it. See, what you should have been saying is, baby, you know what? I love fried Spam toast. Girl, this is the best fried Spam toast you ever made, girl. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to call one of the sisters of the church, and they're going to come over, and girl, they're going to take your Spam toast, which is already delicious, and they're going to teach you how to make some greens and some, some black eyed peas and some... <laughs> some macaroni and cheese, some yam, and we're going to put that with that. Oh, girl, we're going to eat good. And she's feeling good. Because she already tells the sister, you know, my baby, she can't do nothing but make spam toast. Y'all need, to, need to make sure that she loves this spam toast. And you come over, and all of a sudden, she's feeling good about herself. About three, four years from now, she's been built up. Some of these holes start to fill up. Or if you have this brother you've married, and he ain't worth a dime, you say, you just don't know how to talk to people. Of course he don't. His daddy was alcoholic. Of course he doesn't. So you just got to keep on telling him and keep on praying and, and keep on sowing into his spirit. Keep on using the ministry of your mouth to build him up so that he won't be torn down. But no, 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 we just keep on pulling on it. We're not yanking on it. We're just saying a little something. And we fell on it. And after a while, it was only this one. And I know we say we're in counseling because I've had folk in counseling and, and I've seen people go to counseling and they say, oh, this is all I said. All I said was this. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, you know, he, he should have been able to take it. I just said this. Problem is you said the wrong, wrong thing. And you said, please show me how to build him back up. And then when the counselor, the preacher, or your mama, or the wise old brother or old sister say, well, what you got to do is first of all, you got to start from the beginning. The only way you can do it is, as a matter of fact, they ain't got all the pieces anyway. So they're never going to be. So you got to pray. Because God, no, God got a whole thing of them. I see the stuff you can't do, God can do. So even though they broken down, God can fix the rest. But you got your part. Because you're supposed to have a ministry of your mouth. And so now you just start building up. And the problem is, the one, <laughs> the one you had, you used it already, so you can't use it no more. You can't use it no more. You can't use it no more. Well, what do I do then? Well, then I, then I looked at myself and I said, you know what? What you've got to do for, my, for your spouse, what you've got to do for your wife, what you've got to do for your husband is all of those ugly things that are in your spirit. Because what we didn't do, we didn't go back and say, you married this person because you are that person. For all that stuff that's in there that you've been jacked up, all the stuff that messed you up from a child, all those hidden fears, all those unfulfilled dreams, all those broken promises, all those cheated on me, all those he lied on me and all that pain and depression and hurt. 
you got to pray and ask God to build you up so that you can use the ministry of your mouth to help somebody else. You've got to get back in chapter 1, 2, and 3 so that the Lord can have some, can build you up because in Christ, hallelujah, in Christ you are, you are victorious. Not because you are all right, not because you are great, but because in Christ you've been saved by grace. You've been delivered from your past. You've been delivered from every sin, not only that you committed, but that has been committed against you. You have been set free from every demon that tries to destroy you. Every bad thing that has happened in your life, the grace of God has fixed it for you. And maybe you maybe you say, I'm Brother Hagin, I, I don't know Jesus. I'm telling you right now, the promise to you is that if you bring your broken pieces to God, if you put your broken pieces in the hands of the potter, the potter will melt you down again and form you into something that you never thought you could ever be. That the God of heaven is good at taking the chaos of your life and putting order to it. Because in the beginning, the Bible says, God looked at the whole world and it was void and without form. And with one word, the Bible says that God said, let there be and there was. God will look at your problems. God will look at your brokenness. God will look at your lack. God will look at your inability to communicate and say, let there be. And if you're as submissive as the world, as submissive as the animals, God will make you into what you need to be. Thank the Lord because the Lord loves you even when you ain't about nothing. Thank the Lord that when you come to the Lord in faith, he can heal your broken heart. He can heal your broken spirit. He can heal your broken mind. He can heal your broken emotions. He can set you in a place that you can take your broken pieces and then when you run out of pieces, he starts adding pieces and the next thing you are whole and full and now you can speak life because you're full of life not your own life but the life of God let him fix you he'll do it he can fix your marriage you say well my marriage looked like this let me tell you what this is this is a whole lot of good pieces all you need to do is put it back together you say, well, brother, hey, this piece is missing. For well, by grace, you have been saved. It's Ephesians, through faith. It's not about you. It's the gift of God. God's going to keep giving you gifts. James said every good and every perfect gift, perfect means complete. It's from above, from the Father of lights. And he won't fool you. He won't change on you. He will always be there for you. Maybe you need God today. You say, I don't know what to do. Well, right now, I'm going to pray for you. And you can pray with me. Now, this prayer ain't going to save you, unless you're already saved. But what this prayer will do is it will activate heaven. And hopefully it will activate your spirit to be tired of the jacked up communication in your marriage. And have this C word be communication, not catastrophe. Let us pray. God, we bless you. Look at us on the inside, God. See everything that's broken about us, about our spouses, about our relationships. Take these big principles, God, and fix us. So that when we get in our particular situations, whether it's husband, wife, father, son, mother, daughter, boss, employee, when we get in our particular situations, you, oh God, can fix it. But not fix it like we fix stuff. But you will fix it in a way that it is whole. God, we're tired of being partial. We're tired of the frustration of trying and trying and nothing works. Father, we submit to you. We surrender to you. And we bless your name. And we trust that you're going to do it. Father, as a matter of fact, we, we know it's already done. All we have to do is submit to it. Stir up within us your spirit. Heal us 
in every way we're broken. Bless us beyond measure. Keep us in your care because you are good and your mercy endures forever. We ask this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ who died out on Calvary's hill, was buried in a borrowed tomb, defeated death, hell, and the grave by rising up early on Sunday morning, declaring all power in heaven and in earth is given to me. And he takes that as good news. In his name we pray. Amen. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Holding nothing, I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, holding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, 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 withholding, withholding nothing. God bless you.